Praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen, Pastor Faustin. Well, the Lord has spoken with me. Um, the Lord Jehovah, Lord The Lord Jehovah, El Gibor. Jehovah, Rohi. Jehovah, Shalom. Jehovah, Mekadishken. Jehovah, Sori. Jehovah, Ashofet. Hamelek. Jehovah, Imeku. Jehovah, Eli. Adonai. Jehovah, Magen. Jehovah, Shama. Jehovah, Yasha. The Lord, the God, the creator of heaven and Israel, he's spoken with me today in a very tremendous way, in a very, very exceptional way uh, this afternoon. And in this conversation, the Lord, the God of heaven, he came to speak with me about events that are soon to take place on this earth. Jehovah Jireh has spoken with me again this afternoon, very, very seriously and in a very uh, extraordinary way, Jehovah El Olam, the everlasting God, regarding events about to happen on the earth, this very, very shocking uh, kind of conversation about the irretrievable event that is about to befall the earth, irreversible. And what a beautiful time to share with you now before that event takes place. So in this very unique and extraordinary conversation this afternoon, the Lord slayed me so I went to sleep. And while I was asleep, then he showed me tremendous vision in which he took me to a place and then the person of the Holy Spirit appeared and sat before me again this afternoon the Lord Jehovah took me to a place and then God the Holy Spirit the one that you cannot blaspheme nobody can blackmail or blaspheme and see the glorious kingdom of God. No one can ever grieve him and live to see the eternity of heaven. So the Lord this afternoon, in a very, very extraordinary conversation, he took me to a place. And at that place, as I stood, then the person of the Holy Spirit appeared in front of me and sat in front of me. And then he asked me to sit down. And I sat right in front of him. The Holy Spirit, my one and only friend, my only witness. And as I sat there in front of his powerful majesty and presence. And then a worship began, a heavenly worship, a very, very powerful worship took place. And they worshiped the Lord on my right hand side as I sat in front of him. And then he sang along. He sang along with the worship, right, sitting in front of me this afternoon. A beautiful, the most beautiful worship. They were playing very beautiful instruments and they were worshiping in such a tremendous, very beautiful manner. I have never, ever listened to such beautiful worship and ever since the Lord sent me. And then after that, then he spoke with me on certain events that we can, I cannot share here. But most importantly, 
towards the end of that conversation, and then the person of the Holy Spirit, then he told me to go tell them that the coming of the Lord is in hand. Again, let me repeat the specific way in which he put it. To go tell them that the coming of the Lord is in hand, not at hand, is in hand. And at that moment, when I looked left, I saw myself going to many nations, speaking to pastors, gathering pastors across the earth, and telling them that the coming of the Lord is in hand, is now at hand, but he said, is in hand. And I see on the left-hand side also, as I was talking to, to, to pastors, ministering to pastors across the globe, there, there, there was a banner. I see a banner is lifted. I cannot see the people that lifted the banner. But that banner says that as I ministered to the pastors and to the ministers of, of the gospel globally, it was being transmitted live on radio globally. So wherever I spoke, the whole earth listened to the announcement that the coming of the Lord is in hand, meaning is at hand. But the Holy Spirit, in his own words, verbatim, the coming of the Lord, God tell them, that the coming of the Lord is in hand, in hand. But wherever I went to minister, it was being broadcast live by radio through the internet, and the whole earth could listen, receive, listen, and hear the announcement that the coming of the Lord is in hand. Again, that is the extraordinary conversation I had. And then at that point, beyond that point now in this tremendous vision, when the person of the Holy Spirit today appeared before me and sat down and gave this instruction of the Lord, of the Father. Then at that point on, he made me grieve. He made me feel how grieved he is about the fact that the church out there is not ready. And I remember he mentioned certain cities, and among them, the first one he mentioned was New York City, New York. I could tell that the pastors of New York are not ready. But he mentioned a lot of cities across the earth. He mentioned out there a lot, many nations. He made me know they are not ready. So he made me feel... As, as grieved as he feels that the church out there is not ready, yet the coming of the Lord is in hand, is in hand. And then I remember I broke down and began to weep. I wept very bitterly. I wept very, very bitterly that the church, that, that the coming of the Lord is in hand, but the church out there is not ready. So in my weeping, I wept for the church that will remain, the church that does not make it. I have seen them. And it's a tremendous moment no one can behold. You cannot sustain it. And the person of the Holy Spirit, the Lord sent him today, and he sat before me, and he said, go tell them that the coming of the Lord is in hand, is in hand. The coming of the Lord is in hand. And as I did that announcement and went all over the world, there is a banner that was raised, written, a big banner. It looks like written from some plastic material, more like a tent, but more plastic. And uh, it's written in orange that uh, it's being broadcast live, so I could see the live broadcast. And that radio is the Lord's radio, something like that. It has by initials, but I knew the initials, what they stood for. 
and is broadcasting live globally from wherever I went to minister to the church, to minister to the body of Christ, to minister to the pastors, to minister to the ministers of the gospel, to tell them that this is what the Lord says. The coming of the Lord is in hand. I'm reading here the Bible. I'm reading the book of uh, of Joel, chapter 1, verse 15. And it says here, Alas, I begin verse 14. Consecrate a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord. Again, Consecrate a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Verse 15 of Joel chapter 1. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is near, and it will come as destruction from the Almighty. And there are many versions here that I could have read, but it's very clear here that the Lord is saying that this is the hour at which now, across the earth, all the inhabitants of the earth should they should behold sorrow for sin. And that sorrow they behold and grieving, that they grieve over sin, should be able to turn into repentance and humiliation before the Lord, brokenness before the Lord for sin. It is saying it is as though every single inhabitant of the earth has actually in one way or the other contributed to the global sin for which he now calls the global repentance. Because I saw that radio broadcasting globally that they should repent and prepare the way for the coming of the Lord is in hand, broadcast live globally. Meaning calling for global repentance, the global return to righteousness, in Christ Jesus, the only way to heaven. The other religions do not take anybody to the eternal kingdom of Jehovah in heaven. All the other religions are idol worshippers. They are idol religions. He said that this hour we should be endowed with shame for sin and confess our sins and bewail before the Lord over our sin. He says the Lord has essentially appointed this day. That's why the person of the Holy Spirit was once more sent to me. And he sat before me this afternoon, and he says to go tell them, he, say, he sent me, go tell them that the coming of the Lord is in hand is in hand, meaning has drawn quite nigh, very near. That means the day has been appointed for this purpose, for that day, for that event. He says, now at this hour that this announcement has taken place, then we should abstain and refrain from our common chores, our common errands, our common occupations, our common employment, and then set forth a special moment at which now we should draw more closely to attend God's purposes, God's service, God's repentance on this earth, the church, and the nations. He also warns calamity that takes place. I, and I bewailed, I wailed, I mourned for the church that fails to enter. Meaning, calamity awaits. Calamity beholds for the church that does not enter. 
He's saying godliness. Godliness has decayed in the house of the Lord. And so he's saying that now it's time to be restored, to be made whole again, to return to godliness for this event. Tell them to repent. Tell them now to prepare the way. Tell them the coming of the Lord is in hand, meaning everything must now be restored as we await this most blessed and most revered day of the Lord. The moment of truth, the day when we shall know who are those that were really born again. Who are they that were really born again on this earth? Because right now, if you ask them, are you born again? They say, yes, I am born again. Are you spirit-filled? Yes, I am spirit-filled. But that day will be a test. That is the day that will confirm, affirm, and reveal to us on which foundation your salvation has been built, has been launched. Is it on sand or on the rock? So it says, godliness that has been eroded, that has decayed in the house, must now be restored. The love of most that has waxed cold must now be vexed up and fired up in the hearts of men. We must now rendition and bring back the fiery love for Christ. He has sat before me this afternoon, and he told me, God tell them, the coming of the Lord is in hand, is in hand. How awesome. How tremendous to say, is in hand. The coming of the Lord is in hand, because the Bible says, is at hand. But is in hand may as well mean that has now drawn very nigh, must now take place. And the Lord Jehovah continues to do this in his expression of tremendous love unto the church, unto humanity. He's always still beckoning man to return. In other words, tell them to return. And he mentioned many cities. I don't know why he mentioned New York. That the church in those cities are not ready globally. And every single place I went to, the broadcast was global through the radio of the Lord, but via the internet. So everybody had the equal opportunity to be able to hear the announcement that said, the coming of the Lord is in hand, is in hand. The person of the Holy Spirit himself today sat before me and said, the coming of the Lord is in hand, and I trembled. I panicked. I did not even think I would reach this hour to announce this. For nobody knows the day or the hour. The book of James, chapter 5, verse 8, I begin verse 7. It says, Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer anticipates the precious fruit of the soil as he patiently awaits the fall and the spring rains. Verse 8, it says, You too, be patient and strengthen your hearts, because the Lord's coming is near. Very powerful. He's saying, the enduring patience. So in other words, he's saying, even as a farmer awaits a crop, how much more then should we await? Because as a farmer awaits these temporary things here on the earth, the crop, the wheat, the barley, the vegetable, tending them patiently, exhibiting uncommon patience and endurance and trust, trusting that rain will fall and the crop shall come to bear. For this temporary reward, for the temporary recompense, recompensa, how much more than we that are waiting for the husbandman, 
for the husband man, for the Messiah to come, and whose reward in our waiting is eternal glory. How much more should we be patient in that godliness within this very wicked world? This evil world that's full of sexual immorality, everybody thinks immorality left and right from when they are young in schools to everywhere. There is an infection of sexual immorality on the earth. Worldliness and godliness, the systems of heathenism, the systems of, of atheism have consumed the hearts of men from when they are young in school. But he's saying, God tells them to endure just a little longer, for the coming of the Lord is now in hand. He is in hand. The coming of the Lord is in hand. Let them endure just a little longer. The coming of the Lord is in hand. In other words, your eternal reward of the crown of glory, the crown of righteousness, the crown of eternal life, the crown of glory awaits. How much more then should we be patient in righteousness, godliness, Holiness, uprightness with the Lord, and in absolute faith, obedience, and humility unto the Lord. How much more then? He says a farmer, a farmer trusts, has faith that when he plants the crop and weeds it, the rain will come. He awaits patiently, and he has absolute faith, 1,000% faith, there is going to be a crop. And yes, he does have a crop. The Lord your God ensures that that farmer has a crop. The Lord himself, he decrees that for every worker that worketh, their wages must be paid. How much more than the workers of righteousness and to the workers of holiness shall he reward them, give them a pay, their pay, of the crown of glory. And he sat before me today, and he said, go tell them, after the beautiful worship that took place in heaven, and then he said, go tell them, the coming of the Lord is in hand. Is in hand. How amazing. The coming of the Lord is in hand. Why? Why can they endure just a little longer? And it made me know the other church, the church that now has not prepared, has not listened to the announcement, has not cared, has done its business as usual. The church you see in March 22, that when the announcement came, they said, no, I am busy, I'm doing my other things. No, actually we have a trip to Israel, so I'm busy, I'm going to Israel. We have a wedding in our church. We have a project in what? The church that was doing her business as usual. She was so busy, cannot prepare to enter the banquet. While on this other side, he is sending the person of the Holy, God the Holy Spirit himself. And he said, God tells them, the coming of the Lord is in hand. Is in hand. And he's saying, why? Why then can't you wait just a little longer? A little longer. A mother that expects a baby, she waits patiently. She carries the baby patiently with faith that she shall bear a baby and bring the baby to fruition indeed. After nine months, the baby comes out in fruition. How much more than the church should the church have faith on this eternal matter of the day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord is in hand. How much more then should we endure in righteousness, in absolute holiness, in absolute pursuit of righteous standing with God, in zero tolerance to wickedness, apostasy, to sin, 
He says, the coming of the Lord is in hand. The book of Psalms, Psalms 113, verse 3, he says, From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of Yahweh, the Lord's name, is to be praised. When that day comes, the coming of the Lord is in hand. When that day comes, all the nations of the earth will understand that surely, yes, only Yahweh is the eternal God. How sad for one to miss that day, to be on the other side of the law of God, to be among the people for whom I wept so bitterly that they had failed to make it the church that fails to enter. God tells them that the coming of the Lord is in hand. How tremendous. God tells them that the coming of the Lord is in hand. Is in hand. How mighty. What a beloved time when the Lord himself has to make the announcement that the coming of the Lord is in hand. And he rewards, he rewards the patient, he rewards those that trust in him. He has never let them down. Those that trust in the Lord, he has never let down. The book of Psalms 18 verse 30 says, as for God, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is tested, it is perfect, it is faultless, he is a shield to all who take refuge in him. And he says, God tells them, the coming of the Lord is in hand. So, he is a shield unto those that trust in him. That when that day comes, they don't be put to shame, but enter the safety of eternity in heaven. The coming of the Lord is in hand, he says. How tremendous. How beautiful. How awesome. That the Lord himself can come and say, God tells them, after the beautiful worship on the left hand side in heaven, and God tells them that the coming of the Lord is in hand. Psalms 31, 23. All love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doers. That will be the day of reckoning. When the Lord shall reward, because he says, for the Lord rewardeth the faithful. Have you been faithful unto the Lord? Have you been faithful? Because he says, God tells them that the coming of the Lord is in hand. I still see him. I still see him seated there. That the coming of the Lord is in hand, meaning this is the hour to trust in the Lord. May those who have ears prepare the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah. I have seen the Messiah come for a glorious church. And like I said, I have wept in the dream. I have wept when I saw the church that failed to enter. So let us be trustworthy. Let us be honest people. Let us depend on our refuge, on the Lord. This is the hour at which to lay down our common occupation our common employment, our common shores, our common duty, and now give duty. Let us respond to the call of duty to do the service unto God, to pursue holiness and righteousness, to be born again in Christ Jesus, to win souls unto the Lord. And I've said this again and again, that when the Messiah comes, he will judge the nation. Those that enter, he will determine by the following, whether they obeyed his command. Number one, whether they obeyed his command. 
Number two, whether that obedience in his command transformed. In other words, how much their lives themselves transformed into that obedience. As they obeyed, their lives themselves transformed and conformed to that obedience. If the Messiah says, be holy, how much you obeyed that, and how much your lifestyle conformed to that obedience. Obedience unto the Lord. The Messiah is coming. I have seen the coming of the Lord. And thus says the Lord, the coming of the Lord is in hand. Shalom. <laughs> 